Good morning and welcome to this video on the design process and making of my homemade DCF tent. I've broken up the making of my tent into two parts. Part one will cover um, why I'm getting a new tent, what I want in a tent, what's available to buy commercially and my design process. The second part goes through the actually making of my tent, goes through the material list and gives a pattern if you want to have a try yourself. I've been using a Z-Pack Solarplex tent since 2014, but unfortunately the tent is at the end of its life now. It survived a lot longer than I expected, with over 10,000 kilometres of hiking, including three through hikes being Te Araroa in New Zealand, Noge Palangs in Norway, and the Pacific Crest Trail in the USA. I like many things about it, and I was ready to buy a replacement, but unfortunately z -Packs no longer makes this design. I decided to treat the sourcing of a new tent like a procurement process. In procurement, the first and most important step is deciding the product specifications, which are the requirements and measures of these requirements. For me, the product specifications are maximum weight, 550 grams. The material for the walls is to be DCF at the 0.7 to 0.8 ounce per square yard weight and the floor to be a minimum of the one ounce per square yard rate. While most tents are provided in the lighter material of around 0.5 ounce weight, I prefer the thicker material as it's less see-through and it's a bit more robust, therefore lasting longer. My current Z-Pack Solarplex tent was made in the thicker material, so it was a 0.76 ounce per square yard. DCF fabric I'm referring to is Dyneema Composite Fabric and it's formerly known as Cuban Fibre. It's a high performance non-woven composite material used in high strength, low weight applications. Originally it was used for sailcloth. It's constructed from a thin sheet of ultra high molecular weight polythene, it's a Dyneema component, laminated between two sheets of polyester. The advantage of this material is its high strength to weight ratio as Dyneema is 15 times stronger than steel. It is fully waterproof, it doesn't absorb water and it does not stretch which is why it's great for tents. The next requirement it must be insect proof to protect against sand flies and mosquitoes. I want to be able to set it up using my hiking poles so no extra weight of added poles. I want the floor to be a bathtub style with a minimum of 10 centimetre sides. I want the footprint of the tent, that's the external footprint, the space it uses on the ground, to be under 3.5 square metres. I often cam in areas with thick bush and I need to be able to squeeze into tight spaces. The minimum height at the peak is to be 105 centimetres so I can sit up without touching the ceiling. The minimum height at the tent ends is to be 34.4 centimetres, so my feet don't touch the top of the tent. And I this measurement is based on my mattress, which is 6.4 centimetres, my feet 24 centimetres, and a sleeping bag loft of 4 centimetres. The minimum width of the floor of 75 centimetres, which allows me plenty of room because I sleep curled up on my side. Minimum width at shoulder height of 60 centimetres. So this is room at the shoulders when I am sitting up. And this is facing the end, um, not facing the door. The minimum length of the bathtub floor is 200 centimeters and that allows room for myself and my gear stored at my head. Minimum vestibule of 40 centimeters and this is so that I can store my pack um, in the vestibule and in bad weather it gives me enough room to be able to use my stove with the doors closed. And I want a side entry. I dislike the difficulty of getting in and out of the tunnel tent. Also, I have preferred but not essential features. And these are, I want it to also be able to be self-supporting so I can use it when I go bikepacking. I want doors on both sides for increased ventilation and also so I can see the view out both sides. 
I want vents at the top of the tent to improve the ventilation, which reduces condensation. And I don't want any more than six pegs to set it up. The more pegs you have, the longer it takes to put the tent up and the more complicated it is to get the correct pitch. Now I had all of my requirements, I needed to have a look at what was on the market. I only looked at tents that were made out of DCF and I filtered those so I was only looking at those that met my weight requirements. The tents I ended up looking at were the Z-Pax Pleximid, Z-Pax Ultiplex, the Tarp Tent Aeon Lee and the Tarp Tent Notch Lee and Z-Pax Duplex. Unfortunately, none of the tents meet all of my required specifications, failing either in the footprint size or the height at the end of the tent. Also, none of them are available in the heavier DCF. They're all in the lighter um, 0.5 ounce per square yard weight. The closest to my requirements were the Z-Pax Alteplex, which only failed in the footprint area, and the Tarp Tent Aeon Lee, which failed at the foot height criteria. And while I didn't make it a criteria, um, it's also limited in packability because of the struts, so it wouldn't be able to fit crosswise in my pack. After looking at all these options, none really caught my attention. And with the high price of these tents, I decided I was not going to compromise on what I wanted. So I decided to have a go at making my own. I've made a couple of packs with DCF and I was confident I'd be able to do the construction side of things. So it was just a matter of developing a design that would work and that was within the scope of my sewing ability. I'm a self-taught novice sewer, so I can't do anything too technical. I played around with a couple of designs and I quite like the idea of having a strut at the top of the tent to maximise the headroom and poles at my feet to maximise the footroom without increasing the overall footprint too much. To help with the setup on my carpet, I used sellotape to mark out the area of my um, tent bathtub floor and just confirmed, put my mattress on it and confirmed that it was the right size. I then used cheap cotton material um, to simulate the tent and played around and I quickly realized I didn't like the constricted feeling of the smaller peak. So inside the tent is good, here is good. Sideways room, nah that's too tight. So this is not long enough, definitely not long enough. Lengthwise having that at the foot is fantastic. Okay, after playing around, I've decided I'm not going to have the center bar. Um, I was restricted in the width of the center bar that it's still going to fit sideways in my pack. Um, but it's just not giving me enough shoulder room when I'm sitting inside the tent. So I am going to go back to more the style that my current tent has got. With no center bar, it just relies on the, the tension. Um, from the, the front and back um, hiking poles. So it was a good good to see, but that's a no. Um, however, I still do like the, uh, the poles and the ends. Um, that makes a significant difference in uh, keeping the extra foot room without making the tent any longer. Okay, so this is design number two. This is basically square. The uh, the, the tops um, are exactly the same as the bottom, um, so it's a much simpler design. Uh, I still have the um, the pole in the middle uh, on the inside, um, and what I found is the drape seems to be okay though we'll see what it's like with the DCF I raised the height of the pole up to uh, 105 centimeters um, and that seems to have just given me a uh, better head height now I use some cheap material to figure out the size and the drape of the doors I wanted to make sure I had a good crossover at the top to allow to stop the rain coming in. I want my doorway to come out about 
about 40 uh, millimeters, sorry, 40 centimeters. So that's the size of the awning that I want. And it's going to be about 10 centimeters up off the ground. I'm in the process of figuring out how my vents work. Um, so I'm thinking of putting a, a thin thing of plastic to hold it out. What I want is I want it to be able to completely cover um, the, the vent. Um, so if it's in storm, it's fully covered. But I want to be able to have it um, pull back so it's fully open um, to get the most airflow. Just trying to get the shape it, it looks like by um, pinching the top there it uh, causes it to stay out um, from the string um, so I think that's about the right shape I've just been exploring so this length here I've done it so if it's up here um, it fits perfectly and then when it comes down it's uh, sticking out so I should be able to get air going up in there. Now that I've finalized my design I have taken measurements and I can cut out my material and construct my tent. The next video will take you through this process of how I actually put the tent together.